Good morning, actually, JRL200. It's Friday morning. I didn't get to it last night because I had some stuff I had to take care of. I apologize for that. So um, it was great meeting uh, many of you on uh, Wednesday. And I really appreciate you guys coming to, sh to uh, participate in that event. Uh, kind of a interesting concept. Um, you know, are you going to do the uh, embalming with the copper casket? Uh, um, are you going to incinerate yourself and throw your ashes into the ocean like me at my favorite surfing spot? Um, or um, you know, do you want to become fertilizer and, and food for bugs? So, uh, yeah, interesting concept. Um, you know, like I said, it hit really hard uh, at home for me because my wife was diagnosed with uh, lymphoma about a year and a half ago. You, know, you never want to hear cancer. Can cancer is is the devil's disease because it it makes you so sick and uh, it's long, John, drawn out, kind of miserable demise. And it's I'm not sure a lot of you have had family or friends that have had cancer. It just sucks. So hopefully we'll get better at treating it. All right, <clears throat> so from there we go on to uh, week 6, February 19th, and it's all about social support, social structure, which is important when you have uh, compromised health and, and caregiving and how you deal with that. Um, so we're going to go through all the different aspects of social support. So we'll do a quick um, change in the video here. All righty. So um, when we go into... Uh, February 19th, the power of social structure, okay, and my internet is freaking slow, and then we look at the different aspects of social support, okay, social structure, family, the workplace, the state, okay, so we have a lot of political differences on the role that the state plays, okay, um, we had that very clear in last week's discussion about Alzheimer's disease and who's going to, you know, foot the bill. Typical Alzheimer's patient in in a facility that's caring for them that's thirty grand a year. Okay, so if you don't have the finances, who's going to take care of it? You know, um, are you uh, being proactive? Are you putting money away into uh, special tax deferred accounts that can pay for this kind of thing? So much to think about. Family, who's going to care for you? Okay, when you get old, uh, how's that going to work out? And there's a whole dynamic there. Okay, who cares for you now as as a an emerging adult? You know, think how great it is what your parents are doing for you. The workplace as a social structure, and you think about how dynamic that is. The workplace when you're young, okay, um, versus the workplace when you're old. And it's very very different place. You know, young people are eager. They're very social and interactive. Older people tend to pull back and oftentimes uh, live in fear and uh, because they're going to be replaced <laughs> potentially. So these are all big, big, big deals. Okay, We uh, take that to the next level and we look right here um, and we're looking at uh, explaining how in this discussion how your work experience affects one's aging experience. <coughs> And you know, I can just you know go from my own uh, particular example. You know, how how did I meet my wife 30 something years ago? Okay, well, we were both working in um, a, a, a university system. We were actually both working in a medical school. Me getting my PhD, and she she being a, a, a lab technician while getting her undergraduate degree. Uh, because of that social setting, we used to actually call it Club Med because <laughs> it was a medical school. Um, you know, young people were able to meet each other uh, of like minds, and so um, you know, I'm I'm a pretty smart guy. My wife is super intelligent, and so we were able to meet each other. And because of that, we were able to take ourselves up to the next notch, notch uh, socially, uh, because of our educational background that led to financial security and blah de blah de blah. Okay. A lot of people don't have that opportunity, okay, and because of their uh, lack of education, they get stuck in really low-paying jobs. Who are you going to meet? This is where you meet people. You meet people at the workplace, okay, and um, and so then uh, the combined earning potential is less, and you have less opportunity in life. In fact, here we have right here a kind of a neat graph, and this is something for you to think about, and it says right here, you know, how did you meet your partner? Okay, how did they first meet? Okay, well, 
school was where I met my wife, and I combined that with kind of the workplace. Okay, this is a big deal, all right? Online dating service, that wasn't happening when I was around, okay? Um, who goes to a bar and meets somebody? We all do it, but it's not too successful, okay? On and on and on and on and on, okay? All righty. So, um, so these are the two big ones, school and work. So if you X that out because if you're low socioeconomic and you don't go to school, then you work at a shitty workplace and it impacts your overall well-being. Okay, so that's how that works. Let's go back to Blackboard. Let's take a look at here what's going on. Okay, all right, here's my announcements. And this talks about the makeup. So you should know about that in terms of missing the uh, the social gathering. Okay. Um, let's now take a look at over here. Okay. We're going to look at the assignments. So the next big one coming up. Okay. And it's going to come in here. Boom. And that's critical thing assignment to do March 12th. So you have some time. Again, this is the family as a uh, social power structure. Okay. How how your family. Um, assist you and how you will assist them and how strong the family unit is. Okay. Alrighty. So that is it. Boom. It's me again. Okay, my friends. Um, great talking to you. Take care.